that'll that'll record um, okay. your screen. You should see a little camera, uh, a video camera oh, icon. Okay. It's on the side. Yeah. Yes. Yay. Oh. oh, okay. <laughs> we did it, you guys. <laughs> oh, okay. Where are we? Oh, you guys look great. Awesome. How can we uh, improve the sound? Oh, is the sound bad? I yeah. think it's okay. It's okay. Well, we can hear you guys just fine, but I don't okay. know if you can hear us. Okay. Yeah, we I, can. I can hear you great. I have my volume down pretty low and I can still hear you. Okay, yeah. I, I put mine all the way up, uh, but I don't yeah. know if it's the volume for me to listen or. Yeah, I think you're good. Um, so nobody else, we will probably mute ourselves and then we won't be talking at all probably during your talk. Um, if you need us, just say something, we'll be here. Um, there are uh there's a questions panel where people will submit questions mm -hmm. um, you guys don't have to worry about that but we'll be monitoring it so if you want to take questions at the end or throughout just mm -hmm. ask the question and we can we can share that feedback you can also see it as well but i think it'll be too hard for you guys to present and look at the questions okay so i what if uh okay like if we think we have time for questions we could say does anyone have any questions and then can you read the questions yeah exactly yeah, okay. yeah. so and yeah. we might even do like instead of waiting to the very end maybe we do it in sections like we talk about something and say oh do you guys so yeah. that it's a little bit more interactive maybe it's a great idea yeah that's great so we're not just talking at them it's more like uh yeah yeah their, absolutely <laughs> yeah and um, so when we start, um, I thought I would just introduce you guys uh, just to I'll just say, you know, that we're thrilled that Loopy Mango's here and then you guys can introduce yourselves individually. Okay. okay. Um, yeah. And then we'll we'll turn we'll turn off our webcams and our vault. Um, we'll mute ourselves unless you need us. So. Okay. Let me see. Uh, I need a question, but now I can't remember. <laughs> uh, um, okay. Okay. Well, oh, um, so is this going to be recorded or? Yes, it is. By default, it's recorded. Unfortunately, it's recording to my hard drive. So we'll see how that works because it's very full. <laughs> oh, okay. And that's the but, only option they give you is? Well, I it's, it's supposed to be record. I think it just records to my hard drive while it's in process and then it uploads it to their website. It uh -huh. should be fine for this one, but after your talk, I think I'm going to go delete everything and start again. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Actually, I could do that now. We have time. So, um, but yeah, it will be recorded. We can share that with you at the end. Um, and yeah, I, I don't know. Any other questions? Uh, how is the resolution? Can you see okay? I mean, I don't know. It's probably not the best camera. I just didn't know we would have to use Actually, it. Actually, it looks pretty good. It's a lot better than my camera. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and all, all the bright colors really help. It, yeah, you guys look great. <laughs> this is okay. my wool room. Yeah, this is her wool room. <laughs> Love wool. <laughs> I need a wool room. <laughs> Maybe. I gotta tell you guys, um, I teach high school. I just froze. School class do a little test run, and, and they they oh, saw your class for a while. I don't know why. Yeah, I what? I got it. They froze up for me, and we froze for them. I think so. Start oh. again. Hopefully that doesn't happen. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off my webcam. And okay. So then at, at twelve we just. Like, is there anything we have to like click or? Uh, no, I'll or start the Also broadcast. just mute, you know, we'll mute until 12, right? And then I. Uh, yeah, okay. and then I'll start the broadcast. Um, and and I don't, you guys aren't planning to share a screen at all, right? It's just the webcam. Oh, uh, just the webcam, yeah. We'll no, do I mean, you, yeah. you can share a screen if you want. I was just asking. Oh, I don't know how, I don't know oh, why yeah. I would need to do that. That's fine, I didn't think so. Okay, so, so yeah. Mute, then anyone who joins early, they can hear stuff, or how? 
So they, they can't hear us now, but once okay. we start the broadcast, so we'll start it right at noon, then they'll be able to hear us. Okay. So, so but nothing like we need to do. Okay. All right. Okay. Nope. You should do that. <laughs> Thank you. I'm really glad this worked. <laughs> All right, Andrea, you can turn your webcam back on if you want. Yeah. Yeah. You want me on? I'm yeah, ready. go ahead. For while we start, you might as well be. I'm just There's trying. already people here. I know. They're excited. What we, they don't know that we know they're here. <laughs> no. So we had, um, I think, 70 registrations. Let me see. Uh, 68 registered attendees. 68. Yeah, so hopefully on our last one, we had about a 70% turnout rate. So hopefully we'll get 50-ish people here. That'll be pretty good. And that's mostly Anna's gonna talk. You know, you're the, you're the, you're the author. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'll um, go put some makeup on. Okay. <laughs> I should do that too, but oh well.
Allison. Yes. DFW just announced they're canceling. <clears throat> they did. I knew they had to. They had to. I know Caitlin hates it, but. Well, that's nice. It's already started recording this for us. I wish it wouldn't. <laughs> oh, maybe not. Record on start. Okay. Andrea, did you want that recording from your um, anatomy class? No. Nah. I deleted them. Hi, Rupia. Special guest, Ulpi. Good boy, Oh, 
It's 11. It is. Do you, if you want to, so we are at 38 attendees. Mm. Do we want to start right now? And we can. Okay. Okay. You ready? Okay. Great. Here we go. I'm going to hit start. Good morning or afternoon, everyone. Thank you guys for joining us. Looks like we've got a, a lot of people here. Um, so you should just, I'll give you a quick orientation to go to webinar if you haven't looked around yet. You should see a box that allows you to type in questions. So if throughout the, um, the lecture, the class, the talk, you have any questions, um, just type them in. We will, um, so nobody else will see them except all of us. Um, I'm, by the way, I'm Allison uh, of Neutrino, and my sister Andrea is also here. Um, and so we're really, we're really happy you guys could join us for this event. It's been a lot of fun and a lot of work, and it's great that you're here. Um, thank you so much for helping us support all these vendors and uh, instructors and just this awesome community that we have. So um, I let me think if there's anything else you need to know. I think questions will be your best bet for getting oh, we got a nice us. note from Jennifer. Good morning, I beautiful know. faces. <laughs> All right. So um, you guys will all be muted through the course of this talk. Um, but again, if you have any questions, type them in the little box. Andrea and I will be monitoring those. And with that, I would like to introduce you uh, to Uzi Mango. And um, Andrea and I are going to turn off our webcams, but we'll still be here. So take it away, Loopy Mango. <laughs> Hello everyone. Hi everyone. My name is Anna and this is Wei Zhang and we're co-founders of Loopy Mango. Uh, in case you are not familiar with Loopy Mango, we are a yarn brand and a knitwear brand. Um, we started out in New York City in 2004, so about 15 years ago. And um, so Wei Zhang and I, we met at FIT just taking a, a two-day workshop class and then um, a few months later, we started a company completely on a whim. We're still, still in business, yeah. <laughs> uh, believe it or not. So, um, well, um, this talk is about um, styling tips for a sustainable living. And um, so what does it mean? Um, so when I uh, first met Wei Zhang, um, I didn't really uh, put much thought into uh, where I bought my clothing. Um, like I didn't really ask myself, where is it made? How is it made? Even what is it made with? So, well, I grew up in Soviet Union, so um, in the 80s. So in those days, uh, it was very hard to find nice clothing. Um, anything Soviet made wasn't very pretty. So um, a lot of people were making their own clothing. Um, Wei Zhong grew up in South, South Korea, Korea, so yeah. she can tell you more. How, um, um, when you were growing up, where did you buy your clothing? Well, I, I don't remember because we didn't have much uh, materials, so we didn't buy uh, clothing very often. Maybe a uh, few times a year, like New Year's, you get new clothing and you wear like throughout the whole years, like maybe twice or three times a year. And, and people used to, uh, I used to see my grandma mending socks, like socks had a hole and then we give it to our grandma she mended for us 
then I went, uh, went to Japan for studying. Japan was more advanced. They had more material, but uh, Japanese culture is more frugal, I think. So there, um, so that's I, I learned like quality and fat, uh, fibers and and like what is it? Everything details. And then I moved to New York. Uh, I came to America. When was it? Right after 9-11, so 2001. One. So in America, everything is like too much, too much. Everything is big, the drinks are big. Uh, I mean, everything is big. I was very surprised people using pepper towers and they just used and throw it away. We had, um, in Asia, we had what it, nowadays it's completely different, but and back then we used to use this cloth and we wash them and reuse. And so I came from like completely different culture. Then I came to New York. I used to go to flea market and I, I, I really love like vintage clothing. I don't know why and how it started. And I just love, uh, very in love in vintage clothing. I like the uh, quality of it. I like the uniqueness of it. So that became my habit. So uh, most of my clothing I buy I from uh, vintage, secondhand, or like uh, small designers, or I make it. <laughs> yeah, and so when I met Wei Zhong, she um, kind of, um, well, I don't want to say criticized, but when I would say, oh, I bought this and that, and she just said, well, you could buy it's you know you're kind of wasting your money and i was buying uh just mass market like fast fashion um brands and she said well you're wasting your money you could buy something very similar um at a thrift shop you know for a fraction of a cost and um, better quality and better quality um so for example you know she said well look for something that's natural fiber 100 percent cotton or linen or, or wool um well, that's something actually, even in Soviet Union, when you buy fabric, uh, people were a lot more aware of like the fiber content. So you always kind of knew that you want to buy natural fabric, um, natural fiber as opposed to a synthetic. Um, but then I kind of wasn't really giving it a best shot. And then Wei Zhang kind of reminded me of those things. So, uh, and I started going to flea markets with her and also secondhand shops mm -hmm. and, and now, I buy clothing exactly the same way. Uh, it's either secondhand, um, thrift shop, flea market, or we can knit our own <laughs> sweaters now. Uh, and very rarely, um, I, you know, sometimes save up money and buy, uh, you know, maybe a pair of shoes or or a piece of clothing from a small designer that I know like where um, that piece is made. And um, so we've been, um, so I probably haven't bought anything from a fast fashion brand in- um, Very long time. Yeah, more than, more than 10 years. But, so, uh, and yeah, well, the reason we even uh, wanted to do this talk is because um, we recently um, saw a documentary called um, True the Cost. True, the True Cost. True Cost, yeah. yes. So if you haven't seen it, it's, 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 you it's a must. You have see. to see it because it shows um, if you buy like very cheap clothing um, um, from a fast fashion brand, you can see how much it really costs. It takes a huge toll on the environment, on human yeah, life. Yeah. Um, most of those clothing are made in really terrible um, sweatshop mm -hmm. conditions, very unsafe, a lot of child labor is used. So um, after we watched it, we decided that we want to be more vocal about, um, you know, our the way that we buy clothing and um, okay. tell everyone, yeah, yeah. how can we um, help um, other people to have a more sustainable way of um, buying clothing? Because we need clothing to wear, <laughs> obviously, <laughs> to stay warm in winter and, and feel good about ourselves. Yeah, feel ourselves. good about ourselves. Mm -hmm. And we as knitters are, um, or crocheters, 
um, or sewers, we are um, already one step ahead because we can make our own clothing. So uh, we can buy less, but then we still need to buy some. And so Weijong is going to talk about um, how do you style all the different pieces together? How, um, if you make a sweater, um, what other staple pieces in your wardrobe you need to get so that um, what yeah to, you can do more with less for. if you just have a staple pieces you can combine them in different ways so this way you buy less but you have more different options mm -hmm. to wear so for example like Anna is wearing vintage, vintage dress <laughs> uh, we have a lot of vintage dress dress is like the easiest way to yeah. dress up so it's, it's black and white so it goes with a lot of things you can you know Wear with a, yeah. an accessory. So uh, this this is navy and black and also like so a dress in a neutral color is a great um, staple piece. Yeah, you can you can wear it, yeah. it with like a bright color cardigan. Um, but also if you have a bright color or pattern, uh, some people say oh it's too much pattern I can handle it. Then you can wear with cardigans like that yeah so if your dress has a lot of um things going on yeah this might not be <laughs> then you can uh, wear whatever colors like you can wear black yeah you, you can, can tone, tone it down, down with a, a neutral yeah. color uh, knitted and garment belt it and so you can still see a little bit of the print uh but then it's not too overwhelming yeah so dress is like a really great way to like style because it's so easy you don't have to think about top and bottom separately and another thing i buy uh, is denim denim uh so i'm wearing vintage denim and i have a lot of pieces so denim in made in uh, before 90s has a different five, uh, fabric. Fabric is more uh, durable and the cottons are different. <laughs> of course, the quality of cotton is a lot different. And these are all uh, were very dark colored, but I, uh, not this one, but I bleached it, so it, I made it like a little bit more lighter color. I think lighter color looks better on me. And this one, I bleached it, and it looked like what you call, like a different effect. And I, when I buy um, clothing, I know my body type. I have a long torso, so I, high waist makes my leg longer. <laughs> so I tend to buy high waist and with a lot of details. And I buy belt. Oh, so I buy belt mostly like flea market or vintage shop or my favorite department store, Salvation Army and Goodwill. <laughs> <laughs> you can buy this um, like belt at about five to ten dollars, which is very cheap. This is like hundred percent genuine leather, has a lot of these details. I don't know if you can see it. A lot of beads. Oh, yeah. So this can make a little bit of accent. Or with the wearing dress. red. Yeah. Or right. even sometimes, well, what about sizing? Like when you buy clothing, don't pay too much attention to the number size. Oh, how how beautiful this bucket <laughs> so cute. <laughs> and the, all the details. Because keep in mind, uh, they use different numbering system for clothing. Mm -hmm. So depending on how old the garment is that you're buying, like size 12 doesn't necessarily mean uh, it's size 12 modern times. So, um, if you have an opportunity to try something on, always do. But if you're buying something online, like on eBay, for example, you can it's always great... send them an email. Yeah, they, they usually measure. put measurements. So, and even if you buy a dress, if it's a little bit, like I sometimes buy it a little bit too big, and then I just wear it with a dress with a belt. So, like this was, I think, too big, and I wear it with a belt, and then uh, that solves the problem. And the denim jacket, I always buy when I see it. And I put embroidery, so the 
and I, I, uh, I put embroidery. So you can like play with it. This is my yeah, so favorite you can thing. Buy a vintage piece and then embellish it. Yeah, um, you can embellish it. I have another jacket. That one. I paint it. So much fun because it doesn't cost much. I can play with it. I put a lot of uh, safety pin here, so it's more like funky. <laughs> and vintage slips. So um, a lot of knitwear, um, if you're knitting something loose, especially a lace pattern, um, do you have a, a lace sweater? So then you can wear it with a camisole or a slip underneath. So these, there's uh, so many you can buy on eBay. Um, and for a slip, it's much easier to get. You, you don't have to be so concerned about the size. And if you're not sure, always just go up a size because it's a slip. You're going to wear it um, inside of a knitted dress, for example. So Yeah, and it, uh, you know, the fiber doesn't get to so it. Yeah, so um, some of them are silk or polyester. So then, um, uh, yeah, the fiber doesn't stick to it. Or this is a vintage crochet dress, crochet dress so oh, 70s. And yeah. again, so get a vintage slip. You can do in the same color or even a co contrasting color. This way you can really see the with. pattern. We have some questions if you want to take oh, a few sure. questions. Yeah, I'd love to take some questions. Okay, um, so first of all, could you talk a little bit about sustainable fiber types? Like, are there specific mm -hmm. fibers that you recommend and ones that you avoid? Yeah, sustainable fiber would be natural fiber. Yeah, any natural, so, so plant or animal based. Uh -huh. Cotton, linens, also silk, um, wool. Wool, any you know, wool, sheep wool, mohair, alpaca, any animal fiber is um, you know, is biodegradable. Yeah, when you um, go to any the, plant, uh, like you know, cotton, linen, um, hemp. That's why uh, our yarn is a hundred percent natural fiber. Yeah, when we, we make when we develop Lugi mango yarn, um, we only use natural fibers, so um, cotton for plant and animal uh, based. Uh, for wool or more hair. Um, I know a lot of people like to use acrylic because it's easier to uh, care. So you can put it in the washing machine and- And it's very cheap too, yeah, but it's, but it's um, uh, probably the worst fiber you can think of because of it's so made from petroleum, petroleum. so you, you're basically supporting so the oil industry the and it doesn't biodegrade. Uh, what is biggest waste um, the biggest polluter, polluter, polluting industry is fashion industry, or is it no, oh, it's no, oil? Petro petroleum, yeah, petroleum, and the clothing is the second. Is the second biggest polluting industry. So if you know, we all can do our part, and it doesn't mean that you have to like one day just completely change all your habits. <laughs> Slowly so start doing like with one little step at a time, and every not only clothing, help. but um. You know, when when you buy furniture or china or rug, anything can be recycled. And basically, we have to change our lifestyle. More. Yeah, lifestyle and just develop new habits. Mm -hmm. And little by little, you can, um, anyone can make a difference. And um, a little small step at a time. Great. Um, and then this is my own question. Am I allowed to throw in my own question? <laughs> so I, I don't know. It, maybe it's a statement. Um, one thing, uh, you know, I think that can be hard for people is that often natural fibers um, in terms of yarn can be very expensive. Mm. Um, I don't know if you guys have done this, but um, when I was younger and I couldn't afford um, a lot of the nicer yarns I wanted. Um, I would go to the thrift store and buy sweaters that were made out of a nice yarn and then unravel them. Yeah, them. I yeah. Know that. I, thank you for bringing that up. Um, we, I wanted to mention it, but I forgot. So that is definitely another way yeah. um, to do it. Yeah, vintage store is the place to go. I mean, it's a really place to store, get inspiration. Yeah. You can buy or, or at least see um, old like knitwear. You can take it apart and re-knit it 
or eBay, um, eBay, eBay. If you not worry about consistent dialogue and you can buy uh, discounted uh, priced yarn yeah. on eBay or Etsy. But you would be surprised. I mean, I, I think it's a. Um, I mean, people think yeah, natural fiber is very expensive. Not really. Like you really have to see. Um, but it you know, how much depends you, on the uh, design too. Yeah. So yeah, you can I, knit something that takes up less yarn. So like when Wei Zhong designs, she always keeps that in mind. Like how can you make more with less um, fiber? Yeah. Awesome. My philosophy is like quality over, over quantity. quantity. Yeah. So you know <laughs> well i don't buy something i because it is cheap so i don't buy something i'm gonna wear like a couple of times i'm gonna throw it away yeah never buy something yeah. disposable just because it's cheap see can i wear it you know more than 20 times then you should buy it otherwise you, you're gonna or buy forever. it For yeah, or forever yeah or forever yeah to someone else. um okay another question is um uh, about and I don't know if you'll know this, but um, somebody is wondering if you know of sustainable fashion brands that mm -hmm. uh, focus on on plus sized clothing. So many of the uh, larger sizes can be hard to find. So I don't I, I don't really know because I don't really shop new clothing, right. and I'm not really. I don't we know. don't know. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> but you know, it would be interesting. Like we can do some research, research and if yeah. we find it, we'll yeah. share um, on Great. our social media. But just this isn't something we would know at the uh, top of the head. But sure. um, definitely, hopefully, like a lot of companies are going to kind of change um, how they make clothing so that like it's more um, size inclusive. So, we are trying to yeah we are also trying to um have more sizes more variety of sizes uh but we, we are a very small company <laughs> so and it's uh it can get consuming yeah. to adjust for more sizes but it's in the works yeah, we're trying. Yeah. yeah great um we did have um a couple of comments on that so somebody uh, sandy recommended alice alexander company um, as a great sustainable plus size oh. company and someone else um, has commented that Eileen Fisher uh, uh, has. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So um, the other question that we have here is from Laura, and she said she bought a vintage dress that's 100% cotton and it's mm. small for her. Mm. Would you guys recommend altering it um, at all, yeah. like trying to add some um, gussets or? something in into it or is it better just to resell it and try and preserve its its natural state and its beautiful integrity oh uh, it depends on the design uh, something uh, some dresses are easy to alternate i mean alter uh, yeah alter. and also well or like, i don't know how to sew but if somebody is a good um seamstress it, it might be worth easy it, to yeah. do so um i guess it's hard to also without seeing the dress it's hard yeah. to buy but um if you're interested they're both good options it, you just have to decide definitely like to see make it work <laughs> yeah like i know sometimes like okay i buy something and it's too long that is easy i yeah. you know so it, it depends on how complicated i know with certain fibers it wouldn't apply to this particular case but i've heard that with certain like with vintage rayon sometimes you buy a dress at a vintage store you wash it and it shrinks so i have heard that if you steam it it can get bigger so it doesn't help in this particular case but if you have a rayon dress that is too small you can try steaming it and it's supposed to expand. Like this oh, uh, vintage men's shirt, they had a lot of, uh, it worn out, had a, like a holes and everything. So I I put the fabric, or, fabric over it. So this was very easy for me to like uh, mend, mending, but it depends on how difficult the Yeah, and how is. good your, your skill at sewing is too. Okay. Uh, I think that's all the questions we've had so far. Um, did you guys have more you want to share or do you want to take more questions if people have them? 
If you have a question, we yeah, can, can read it or um, we can talk. Um, more. I have a quick question, Andrea here. Um, I live in Oklahoma and we don't have very good thrift stores locally for me to shop. Um, do you have any online places that you would recommend? Yeah, eBay and Etsy is, yeah. is the best place. And you can put the keyword like denim or vintage uh, sweatshirts. I have a lot of vintage sweatshirts. I buy from eBay. Oh, cute. Yeah, very cute and very good. Um, uh, has a thickness and 100% cotton and I love finding things from eBay. Whatever I wear, like jewelries, I get eBay, thrift store, like everything I wear. Most of them are from Yeah, and yeah. there's so yeah. much on eBay. It takes time, of course, uh, going through it. But well, you can put the keyword. Yeah. And you eliminate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and actually somebody just commented this and I was gonna ask you guys about it. Um, so somebody mentioned, Rachel mentioned uh, Thread Up. The, it's an online thrift store. I don't know if you've heard of it. Thread Up, yeah. Thread up. yeah. 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 No, I don't no, know. Okay, I was, I was gonna ask if you knew very much about them, but I, I've heard them advertised on some podcasts um, and I haven't tried them, but it sounds like Rachel has. So uh, I think you probably pay a slightly higher price, but it's supposed to be a lot easier to filter and search than like in an app actual thrift store so um, yeah so it's thread up I'll, I'll reply all to the comment but it's t-h-r-e-d-u-p so there's no um no a in the thread up we'll definitely check it out anything vintage yeah but on etsy sometimes like you don't think of etsy as having vintage but but actually they do have quite a few oh, a lot a lot yeah. of sellers sell vintage and it's probably better edited maybe than ebay yeah think? but you can always compare the price mm -hmm. and i sometimes find um e most of the time i feel like ebay is a little cheaper but uh, not always yeah so i compare the price mm -hmm. Okay, people are giving us a few other suggestions, so I'm just sharing those with everyone. Um, I don't know how to say it. Mercury, 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 the um, Pop Shop Goodwill. Um, mm -hmm. So I'll, I'll just post all those in the chat window. Uh, so we have three minutes left. Does anyone have um, other questions for Loopy Mango? Any question? <laughs> Nothing yet. Um, getting a lot of thank yous for doing this. People really appreciate um, yeah, we really the appreciate conversation. Joining in and because yeah. we think it's uh, so important to um, to think, you know, before you buy something and yeah. to, to shop sustainably. And especially this time. And not just especially at this time, and not just for clothing, but also for let's say for produce, like we started buying groceries, I mean, uh, produce at um, a CSA, which stands for Community Supported Agriculture. So you should um, sure. see if there is uh, one near you. So um, yeah, this way you buy your, your vegetables and fruit directly from a nearby farm. And you pick up um, usually once a week. And, and I think that's a great way to support local agriculture. Great. We have two more questions that came in. Mm -hmm. uh, one is where will your next show be if you know <laughs> our show show we don't know right now because everyone yeah. is canceling yeah yeah i'm yeah. not sure okay and then um someone asked uh if the jacket or i i think the the sweater you were wearing initially is uh, oh, okay. A knitting pattern. Yes, is that a pattern that yeah, um, it's actually a pattern from our uh, new book, <laughs> Ooh. Recluse Cardigan, yes. and it's in the book. So um, in the book, the pattern is written for a solid color, but so Rajon made this one, which is left over yarn. All, yeah, all the left over yarn. Yeah, but you can see like it's. Uh, I mean, the book has 34 patterns, and this is one of them. So awesome. that's another way to be sustainable. Like, don't throw away any leftovers. You can, um, and this oh, is yeah. completely like she just randomly picked. 
That's yeah, wonderful. and if you don't have the thickness of the yarn, you just put. Uh, yeah, you can apply it together. You can do double or strands, triple. Yeah, together make the thickness. Excellent. Okay, well, um, I think we are out of time. So thank you, everyone who joined us. It was great to have you. Uh, well, we'll be spending so much. And yeah. everyone uh, should uh, watch the True Cost. It's very yeah. important. <laughs> true Cost is the name of the documentary yeah, they're talking about. Be sure to follow Loopy Mango if you don't already on Instagram. They have a beautiful Instagram feed. Um, lots of great designs like the, the sweater or jacket that you're seeing now. And uh, thank you guys all so much for supporting this event. And uh, you'll be getting a follow-up email with a survey if you could fill that out to give us some feedback on how this was for you. We'd appreciate it. So thanks so much from me and Andrea from Loopy Mango. Have a great day. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Thank you.